<coughs> What's up everybody? I haven't done this for that long, I forgot my intro. Um, today we're going to be looking at how I clean wheels and arches thoroughly. But first, I'll put the kettle on. Welcome back to Hotchkiss Performance. Okay, so before we get started, I do want to apologise for the lack of uploads recently, um, as I haven't uploaded um, since before Christmas. Um, quite a lot going off, uh, just getting a few things sorted. Uh, so I just wanted to get all that out of the way. So we're back on it. New Year. Hope you all had a brilliant Christmas and New Year, by the way. Um, you know, 2018, I hope it really brings, you know, a prosperous year for all. And we'll get right into it. So the main reason has been the weather hasn't been brilliant um, to be recording. So, you know, it, it's tough. Uh, when you haven't got shelter, I'm trying to get outdoor shots. Um, so pretty much since the last video, I've been just stood waiting around, um, waiting to for the right moment. I mean, it's raining at the minute. Um, to, to be able to, you know, get back on the videos and recording and bringing you more content. So I do apologise, but back on it and I'll uh, try my best to get these videos, you know, smashed out as quickly as possible while keeping the quality there. Okay, so that's that. Um, so today I'm going to run through the equipment that I use, chemicals, and the methods and techniques uh, when I'm cleaning wheels. Because uh, there's quite a lot to cover in this video, so it might be a bit longer than normal. Do let me know what you think. Uh, the comments really are appreciated. You know, not many of you do comment, and obviously, that, you know, that's fine, that's up to you. Uh, but I do want to bring what you want to watch. Um, if you like the longer videos, or just the shorter, snappy, quick, you know, two minute ones that you can watch, and then, want to do something else um, you know let me know what you want to see if you want to see kind of more how to how to videos how to clean interiors or anything like that or if you prefer the product reviews or you know just the what is this and that in detailing because there's so many areas to cover it can be difficult to know which which you do want to watch so please let me know um, also if you want kind of a very well cut and executed production or you like the bloopers at the end and you know me being a bit stupid because uh, I do cut quite a bit out of that because um, I'm a bit daft uh, and it's just I'm not sure how well it will be received because I know some people don't like it you know when people are jokey and they'd rather just watch the video and uh, you know take the serious away so yeah just wanted to mention a few things before we do get started into the main video there we go so let's get right into it okay so the equipment you're going to need uh, this is what I use obviously everyone differs with uh, what they might use this is what I use this is how I clean wheels I'm not saying it's the best way the most efficient um, but this is you know everyone has their preferences so don't take this as gospel but I like to think that I've been doing this job long enough to know you know the uh, how to clean a wheel. So, first thing, dedicated wheel bucket. You don't want any bucket that you use on your paint being cross contaminated with your wheel bucket. You know, you want separate buckets and they're not in reach at the moment. You want separate buckets for your paintwork and a separate bucket for your wheels. So, that is. That's the most important 
piece of equipment out of everything I'm just about to go through because your wheels are the most dirtiest section of your car um, that are going to get covered in you know contamination more so than any other part of the car so make sure you have got a dedicated wheel bucket um, and then it's just you know a variety of brushes uh, depending on the wheel design um, you know the clearance of the spokes and caliper etc um, but you know you've got your you've got your wheel woolies here which are very handy um, you know like that's good for getting behind your spokes so you've got all of them um, you know so that's they're a good option to have I will leave a link in the description to everything I'm about to show you as always some people prefer the easy brush I have done a video comparing the two um, I have both because because I do this professionally I've got to kind of cater for every wheel obviously it depends on what your wheels are um, you don't need all of these brushes I'm just saying what you know you might need depending on which wheels you have so easy tail brush and then we've got Viking short handled brush for the wheel faces nice and soft so it's not going to scratch or anything like that um, then we have the Atlaster soft tip brush now there's two of these we've got this one which is a soft tip and this one which is very very aggressive um, a lot of people use this one for tyres because it does scrub pretty well but it is going to scratch if you've got say gloss black wheels this is just going to mark them up to hell so I wouldn't recommend them uh, really unless you you know down in dirty jobs really uh, engine bays and things like that but anywhere near paint or wheel surface I wouldn't be tempted to use that whereas the soft tip you know it, it's soft you know that's not mark scratching my face at all it, it's just nice and soft um, that's still wet from when I've just used it so that's it's a bit more aggressive to say you know that one um, so it will kind of get into the areas that this might not particularly fit um, you know I like to use this which I'll show you on the footage in a second to get into the wheel nut area you know because you can fit it in and spin it and it gets all inside the wheel wheel nut areas so a very good brush that um, like I say the main thing is make sure it's the soft tip one with the blue collar not the black collar um, so there we go so you've got that one quick note on this mention it briefly um, there was a guy I hope he does watch this video and sees it he uh, just posted up a few a post with a few photos about these and everybody went mental and said where did you get them from because I thought that is actually a brilliant idea and the idea with these is put them on the side of your bucket and then this when this is filled with water and it's in the bottom you're going to have to rummage around trying to find it and when you've got the soap and the suds you're not going to be able to see it well that solves that problem because you can just slot it in like that so it's always to hand at the side of your bucket um, same with say this one you know slot it in might need to think um, and it's always there so that's you're not rummaging around the bottom of the bucket for the smaller brushes um, that you might have so brilliant idea that um, very cheap on ebay uh, i will try and find the link and link it below so that is that tire scrubbing brush absolutely brilliant these um, Paul Dolden details just a shout out there he's in a review on this very recently uh, I will be showing this in action demonstrating it and he praises it and everyone that uses them praises them because they are just brilliant for tires you know you can really scrub the the tire uh, wall and get all that uh, crud and crap off that just all the grease that sticks to it um, brilliant brush then very good very cheap too and just lasts forever i've had this you know god knows how long it's still going strong um dedicated wheel mate 
Again, do not use the same mitts that you're going to use on your wheels, on your paintwork. You're just going to scratch the hell out of your paintwork. So, dedicated wheel mitt. This never goes into a wheel, into a wash bucket, ever. Same with your wash mitts from your paint, never go into the wheel bucket. That's that. Um, <clears throat> Boom. Best dirty cloth ever invented. Um, Clean Korea, Green Monster. Again, I'll leave a link below to where you can get these. I'm doing a separate review on this because it deserves its own video. Absolutely. I thought it was a gimmick at first. I did. I saw it. I thought, mm. but we'll go into that into another video because it's going to go on for quite some time. So, a Clean Korea Green Monster or a really scabby, dirty cloth that you're not bothered about getting shitted up. Um, and binning really because this one you don't have to bin but we'll go more into that in its own video so that goes in there so that's your wheel bucket equipment is there anything else no i don't think there is covered everything yet then chemical products wheel soap of your choice put this into the bucket fill it up with water and you just add in lubrication to all of these tools when you're forcing them into the wheels um you know, okay, it's more foam, more suds, looks cool, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, Auto Finesse Revolution is what I use. But there are a few out there, Duca wheels. Um, I can't think of any more on the top of my head. Just a wheel soap, you can just use standard shampoo, but wheel soaps tend to have a bit more bite to them to clean the, you know, the contamination off the wheels. So that's that then a all-purpose cleaner did the best of APC test this came out on top for every single job so brilliant so we will be using that in this video wheel cleaner of your choice um, in my case crystal clean detail or KKD breakaway about 10 to 1 I think I'm using it in this video very capable product or any alkaline wheel cleaner that you prefer this is isn't a necessary step but I will be covering it in this video chemical decontamination on wheels once you've cleaned it with a regular cleaner fallout remover and a tar remover Again, both from Crystal Clean Detail, brilliant company, brilliant products. My go-to for 95% of stuff. Iron Rain, Tartastic, Tar Remover and Fallout Remover. Um, we'll be covering that in this video. Also, I forgot to mention, apologise for the chopper editing out of practice. You are going to need a tyre dressing. In this case, I'm using CarPro Pearl. My favourite tyre dressing ever. I'm not a fan of shiny tyres. And this just leaves a great finish. It lasts a pretty long time, to be honest, even in wet weather. Um, and it's just an all-round great product. I mean, it's so versatile. You can watch it down to use on any kind of plastic <coughs> or rubber. Um, so... Big up Car Pro Pearl, very good indeed. So that is everything you're going to need. And that is it for equipment. So we'll get stuck in to the car. Right then, so the first thing you're going to do is grab your fallout remover, the most expensive wheel cleaner on the planet, and spray it liberally everywhere on the wheel. No, don't do that, please. Okay, so the reason I say this is this is how my mind works with anything when it comes to detailing. You always start with the least aggressive method first. So I always start with free flowing water because why waste chemical products when water will suffice? So 
after a thorough rinse uh, I then spray APC into the arches um, let that dwell for a second and then what I tend to do just a quick tip always enter the archway from the bottom of the car rather than through the front of the arch which could potentially scratch um, so you're just reducing any chance of inflicting you know scratches and things of that nature if you're forcing the brush through the arch gap against the paint it's so always enter from the bottom of the, of the car Moving on, spray APC onto the tyre walls, allow it to dwell for a second and then scrub. You will see brown grease and dirt being pulled out of the tyre, uh, which could be old dressing and just general contamination that they've picked up from you know, the road surface. Um, as you can see, it is quite a grimy, horrible surface, but you do need to get this clean because this is so important for the stages that come later in the process. Give all that a thorough rinse down. And then what I like to do is go over again with a cloth, in this case the Clint Green Monster, until the foam appears white and tyres are squeaky clean. This ensures the tyre dressing will bond to the tyre more effectively in the later stage. So spray the whole wheel down using the cleaner of your choice. Um, I like to start from the top so that all the product kind of runs down as I'm going and we'll be working on the grime before I even touch it with any form of brush. When it comes to the agitation stage, I always like to start with the barrels first. Then the back of the spokes. Then the wheel nut areas and caliper.
then finally the faces this ensures you are kind of working back to front so you're never working over yourself um because you're going from the back of the wheel all the way to the front I do like to go over with a mate just to get right in there and get stuck in because um, the wheel, the brushes tend to not give you as much feel for, you know, scrubbing the dirt off as a mate would. So make sure you get right in there, guys. Thoroughly rinse the area and then you can check to see how you've done. Then we move on to the chemical decontamination stages. Um, this is only when necessary, because um, sometimes if there's no tar present or fallout, you shouldn't need to. Uh, maybe on older wheels or wheels that haven't been cleaned for quite some time may require this step, but I'll just uh, you know demonstrate uh, for the purposes of this video. You can agitate if you wish. Now, I know it's tempting to lick the raspberry sauce, but please don't. Thoroughly rinse the wheel off and check your work again just to make sure there is no contamination and dirt present on the tyre or the wheel. Always check the back of the spokes as people do tend to miss this area. Moving on to the drying stages, compressed air is brilliant for this if it is available. Um, but if not, you can use pet hair dryers or even like a Hoover which has got a blower attachment to it. If not, you can just use drying towels, uh, you know, and some old cloths to get the, you know, as much as uh, the water off as you can because you do need to make sure the tire is dry uh, for this final step. So the icing on the cake is always the tyre dressing. In this case, I'm using CarPro Pearl. I'm not a fan of shiny tyres and this leaves a lovely sort of matte satin finish.
A massive pet hate of mine is when people don't roll the car forward or back to get to the very bottom of the tyre. So always ensure you do this to get the final probably inch or so at the bottom of the tyre because this is the difference between a shite job and a good one. Job done and it's brew time. And that wraps it up. Hope you have enjoyed this video. A um, bit longer than normal. Uh, hopefully you have um, enjoyed watching it and picked up a few tips along the way. Um, let me know in the comments what you do think to this video. Um, I don't usually make them this long because I know that people have got stuff to do and you know you don't want to be watching YouTube videos for hours on end. Um, but like I said, I just wanted to give a bit of a more in-depth video uh, since I haven't uploaded for quite some time now um, there we go so please give it a thumbs up if you did like the video um, god I'm so out of practice with this I do apologize I can't even remember me my script I'm not on a roll I shall see you in the next one got a few things coming up um, I'll keep them under, under wraps for now because I don't know when they're going to be coming uh, but we've got plenty to come in 2018. Um, thank you very much for everyone that's shown support so far. Um, and hopefully much more to come, much more content. I'll catch you later. Cheers. Shout out to Craig Jones, because he knows why I'm laughing. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat>
Tá dando? Bom. Tchê-tchim. Peace.